Hey, we're Casey and Lachlan. We are now two months into our 12 month work and travel adventure through Europe. And in this video, we're gonna take you through how we spent a week in Edinburgh. Woo, let's go. The first thing we did was hike up Arthur's Seat. It's right in the middle of Edinburgh and gave us an amazing 360 view of the entire city. On the way to the start of the hike, we walked through Holyrood Park and past the Palace of Holyrood House. It's right at the eastern end of the Royal Mile, which we learn about later on our tour of the Old Town. Right, let's get to it. This shouldn't be too hard. By this point in our trip, we hadn't even seen Edinburgh Castle yet, so it was really quite an amazing way to get our bearings and see the city. It's a relatively short hike, so we'd recommend this to anyone visiting Edinburgh for the first time. Our post-hike reward was lunch at the Pakora Bar. They served a fun blend of Indian and Scottish food that we highly recommend. Tonight is Burns Night in Scotland. It's one of the main reasons we scheduled in Scotland for this period of time, so very cool. If you don't know, Burns Night is celebrated on the 25th of January each year in Scotland and commemorates the life and poetry of the national poet Robert Burns. It usually involves a lot of whiskey, traditional Scottish food and the poetry of Robert Burns. We chose to go to St Vincent's Church and listen to some live music and poetry. It was such a fun and unique way to spend the evening and it's something we will remember for a long time to come. We just walked past the Edinburgh Castle for the first time. What did you think, Lot? I don't know how you get used to it. How do you get used to walking past a castle like on the hill like that? I don't know. It's crazy. It's so beautiful. It was so windy too, but we are now safe and sound drinking before our whiskey tasting. Warm up round. So as Casey said, the next item on our Edinburgh bucket list was a whiskey tasting. For me personally, of all the things we have planned this year, this has been one of the activities I've been looking forward to the most. We went to a bar called Hot Toddies, where they have this amazing whiskey lounge underneath the main bar. It was super cozy and made for a great night. There are nice whiskey sweet cups. Alistair, our host, was amazing and it's definitely worth the £36 per person. Popularity because they're drinkable. Smooth, yes, yes. Yeah, I agree. What was especially cool was the way he told us the history of Scotland through the eyes of the whiskey makers and distilleries of the past. Delicious. The next day we went on a guided tour of the Old Town. We only planned this at the last minute, but it was fantastic. I can't imagine spending a week in Edinburgh now having not been on the tour. Well, what we've got today dates from the 12th century with later additions, been a church here since the 12th century, all of Scotland's main national and religious services still happen here. This building is big, it's old, it's holy. There is so much history behind every building and every close that you really need someone to walk you through it all and tell you all the secrets. 
people spitting on the ground and rubbing the feet of statues all make sense now. The following day we actually went on a very similar tour that we researched ourselves. We went to all the main Harry Potter locations in Old Town Edinburgh. But first we stopped for coffee and pastries at the Edinburgh Farmers Markets. We went to the Elephant House, which was a location where JK Rowling wrote some of the books. Greyfriars Kirkyard, where JK Rowling got some of the inspiration for naming the characters in the book, most famously Tom Riddle. Victoria Street, which is potentially inspiration for the description of Diagon Alley. And Edinburgh City Chambers, where JK Rowling's handprints can be found for being awarded the Edinburgh Prize in 2008. Having been on the walking tour yesterday, it was great to explore the old town again with all of our newly learnt cultural and historical context. The last item on our list for the day was a visit to Edinburgh Castle. We watched the one o'clock gun go off, which used to be a signal for citizens to set their watches. And then spent the next few hours taking in the amazing scenery, incredible museums and unique architecture. It used to be home for the royals when they visited Scotland, but now they stay in the Palace of Holyrood House. One of the coolest things about the castle is that it's still a fully functioning military garrison. After another workday, we went on a tour of Mary King's Close. You get to walk underneath what is now the Royal Exchange through the Mary King's Close. They tell you the incredible history and stories of Mary King and other families who lived during the plague in the mid-1600s. Unfortunately, you can't record during the tour, but you really can't miss this if you're travelling through Edinburgh. The staff and tour guides are amazing, and being underneath the subterranean streets let you see the city through a whole new lens. The last big item on our list was the National Museum of Scotland. But first we stopped to try out the famous fish and chips from Birdies on Victoria Street. It was great, but not quite as good as the fish and chips from Hobson's in Soho. As you can see, we had a blast at the museum. Here are some highlights. We saw the Lewis chess pieces to round out our tour of things in Edinburgh that have inspired JK Rowling. We saw three of the Stirling heads. After seeing the majority of the collection at Stirling Castle a few weeks ago, it was fun to see the rest in Edinburgh. And of course, the Millennium Clock. We had an amazing time in Edinburgh. We hope you liked the video and we'll catch you in the next one as we start to explore Northern Scotland.